Imogene's Last Stand by Candace Fleming, illustrated by Nancy Carpenter. Littleville, New Hampshire was small, so small it wasn't even a speck on the state map. Still, Littleville was home to a village green, a general store, a three-legged cat, and a little girl named Imogene Tripp. Imogene loved history. When she was a baby, her first words were, four score and seven years ago. As a preschooler, she finger painted an accurate map of the Oregon Trail. And as a kindergartner, she used her show and tell time to give a series of lectures on important women in history. Now, Imogene's attention was on the Littleville Historical Society. The society, a centuries old house stuffed with dusty antiques, had sat at the end of Main Street, unloved and unwanted, until Imogene pushed open its creaky front door. Wow, she exclaimed. What a mess, added her father. Imogene shook her head. This isn't a mess, Daddy, she declared. This is history, and in the immortal words of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., we are made by history. Then she got busy sweeping away cobwebs, filing old letters, pasting yellowed photographs into albums, identifying fossils, organizing arrowheads, and even refinishing a four-poster bed. When she was done, Imogene waited and waited and waited to give the townspeople a tour. But in the immortal words of Davy Crockett, she sighed, ain't nobody coming. Finally, one Monday morning, a workman arrived. He pounded a sign into the society's front yard. Notice, this house will be torn down Saturday, so a shoelace factory can be built in its place by order of Mayor I. M. Butts. Torn down, cried Imogene. But in the immortal words of William Morris, old buildings do not belong to us. They belong to our forefathers and they will belong to our descendants. The workman shrugged, tell it to the mayor. So Imogene did. When she finished, Mayor Butts shook his cheeks. My position is firm. Out with the old, in with the new. What about the society, cried Imogene. What about history? Who cares about history, snorted the mayor. Shoelaces will put this town on the map. He showed her to the door. Out on the sidewalk, Imogene fumed. I won't let it happen. In the immortal words of John Paul Jones, I have not yet begun to fight. And fight she did. Tuesday morning, dressed in her Paul Revere costume from Halloween, Imogene galloped up and down Main Street. The bulldozers are coming! The bulldozers are coming! She shouted. No one heeded her cry. Finally, Mr. Tuttlewit stepped out of the general store. Hold your ponies, little missy. Don't you know shoelaces are gonna put this town on the map? Imogene snatched up her stick horse. In the immortal words of Theodore Roosevelt, Boulder Dash! She stopped down home to her father. But Wednesday morning, she was at it again. Armed with stepladder and scotch tape, she tied a red, white, and blue ribbon around every tree, street light, stop sign, parking meter, mailbox, fire hydrant, bike rack, baby stroller, and dog collar in town. Don't let your pass get smashed, she cried. No one joined her cause. Finally, Officer Ditz Williams said, those boys are real pretty, honey, but shoelaces will put this town on the map. Imogene frowned. She trudged home to her father. But Thursday morning, she was back. Up before dawn, she scribbled until her fingers cramped. Then as the sun rose in the sky, a biplane dipped low over Littleville and dropped hundreds of handmade flyers. Rally on the village green and save your history, each one read. No one rallied. Finally, little Abner Pitt pedaled over on his tricycle. Don't you understand, Emmy? Shoelaces are going to put this town on the map. It was the last straw. In the immortal words of Chief Joseph, she sobbed, 
My heart is sick and sad. She ran home to her father. All too soon it was Friday. Imogene wandered through her beloved society. Goodbye photographs, she sniffled. Goodbye fossils and four poster bed. Goodbye old letters. A yellow parchment caught her eye. Imogene read it once. She read it twice. She read it aloud. October 16th, 1789. Dear Sir, thank you again for the hospitality you showed me last Tuesday. The oxtail soup was delicious and the four poster bed as soft as angel clouds. Indeed, I have not slept so well since leaving Mount Vernon. Your humble and obedient servant, G. Washington. Emma Jean gasped. George Washington? Had he really slept here? Quickly, she wore, wrote a message explaining everything to the renowned Littleville historian, Professor Cornelia Passmatters. Please hurry, Emma Jane begged. Then she clicked send and began to pace. Time, if only she had more time. But how could she get some? Inspiration struck and Emma Jean sprang into action. When Saturday and the bulldozers arrived, Imogene Tripp stood ready. In the immortal words of the Vietnam War poster, she shouted, heck no, I won't go. The bulldozers growled to a stop, watching, waiting. Her father came on the run, Imogene, get out of the way. But Imogene squared her shoulders. Daddy, she declared, in the immortal words of Abraham Lincoln, a great oak is only a little nut that held its ground. I'm holding my ground. Just then, Mayor Butts huffed up the porch steps. Unlock yourself this instant. Heck no, I won't go, Imogene cried. The mayor whirled on Imogene's father. Do something. Imogene's father looked from the mayor to his daughter and back again. Heck no, we won't go, he finally cried. Mayor Butts's nostrils flared. That pipsqueak can't stay on this porch forever, and when she moves, smash. He stomped back to the bulldozers. As the sun rose higher, the townsfolk gathered to see what was happening. Mr. Twuddle Tuttlewick arrived. So did Officer Ditz William and little Abner Pitt. He called out, are you all right, Emmy? In the immortal words of President Martin Van Buren, I am okay, she replied firmly. By mid-afternoon, TV reporters had arrived. They rushed to interview the little girl who refused to leave the porch. In the immortal words of Eleanor Roosevelt, you must do the thing you think you cannot do, Imogene told them. Suddenly, a limousine appeared. Its door opened and out stepped Professor Pass Matters, gasped Imogene, followed by the President of the United States gasped the crowd. The president headed straight for the cameras. I'm here to declare this house a national landmark. She held up a brass plaque. George Washington slept here. Imogene whooped. We did it. Yes, indeed, agreed Professor Pass Matters. I'm so proud, said Imogene's father. Little Abner Pitt stepped forward. Wait, he cried. What about shoelaces? Shoelaces? Mayor Butts snorted. Who cares about shoelaces? He smiled for the cameras. Why, our town's history will put us on this map. The townspeople cheered. The bulldozers rumbled away, and Imogene plucked the key from her pocket and freed herself. Then everyone, even Mayor Butts, went on a tour of the Littleville Historical Society. In the immortal words of me, Emma Jean later said as she waved goodbye to the last of her guests, that was totally fun. It sure was, laughed her father. It sure was. And then at the back of the book, you will notice that there are some historical tidbits about various leaders in our country.